dealing with unwanted irrevocable trusts and basis issues. That's the subject of today's ActTech Trust and Estate Talk. Welcome to ActTech Trust and Estate Talk from the American College of Trust and Estate Council, a professional society of peer elected trust and estate lawyers in the United States and around the globe. This series offers professionals best practice advice, insights, and commentary on subjects that affect our profession and clients. And now, our ActTech Fellow host with today's topic. This is Travis Hayes, ActTech Fellow from Naples, Florida. There has been an increase in the use of irrevocable trusts and the duration of those trusts. While irrevocable trusts cannot typically be changed, the circumstances surrounding the purpose and administration of those trusts do change. So what do you do with irrevocable trust that you don't like anymore? To speak about this topic today, we are joined by ActTech fellow Hugh Gill of Wichita, Kansas. Welcome, Hugh. Thank you, Travis. Uh, my pleasure to be here. We found that we are dealing with irrevocable trusts that no longer fit the situation in which they were they were drafted. The most common example is a revocable trust, which would have the typical AB plan uh, or the family trust marital trust plan, where uh, assets would be used to absorb the credit at the first spouse to die, with the balance going to the second trust. And these trusts become, again, irrevocable at death. Um, but times have changed, and the, uh, the amount of the exemptions have changed, and now we are able to move exemptions from one spouse to another. So, in other words, these plans, frequently the ones that the planners have drafted themselves, that were plugged directly into the Internal Revenue Code, no longer work the way that were anticipated, and there is a consequential penalty uh, from an income tax standpoint, that this credit shelter trust that we create uh, because we thought we had to, uh, to lock in that that exemption amount, loses the ability to get a second income tax step up in basis uh, at the death of the second spouse. Um, so the short of it is our planning for estate tax purposes, uh, which currently is no longer needed, is leading to a negative consequence on the income tax side. So what I did was think of a few questions on what would I do or how could I go about changing an irrevocable trust that I don't like any longer, whether that be for tax purposes or others. And the first question that I ask is, can I skip this question altogether? That's the best way to handle it is to not have to. And the way to perhaps do that is if the trust is considered uneconomical. And by that, I mean the cost of administering the trust exceeds the benefit of continuing it. Uh, And this you will find at the Uniform Trust Code at Section 414A. The Uniform Code had a a number, suggested number of 50,000, meaning that the trustee could uh, discretionarily eliminate a trust if the amount of the corpus was less than 50,000. Um, As with a lot of the uniform laws, they became ununiform as states adopted them, and each state has a a different number. Kansas, for example, which is my state, uh, has a safe harbor of 100,000 or less. Different states will have different numbers. But But the basic question is, can I skip it altogether? And the answer is yes, if the trust is uneconomical. Second question then is, if that doesn't work, can I blow it out or can I distribute the assets out of the trust in an acceptable way that would allow us to fold up the trust and therefore no longer be restricted by the language of the document? And, of course, the trust document may give absolute power in somebody to make a distribution, whether that be a trustee or a trust protector. And so by looking at the document, there may be a way out just by means of a back door if someone has the absolute power. And of course, the absolute power to distribute assets in fee outright also means that you have the power to distribute the, a lesser property interest in trust. Absolute, of course, doesn't really mean absolute. The trustee is still bound by the obligation of good faith and working in the best interest of the beneficiaries. And that is 
cited at UTC 814. But if I can't skip it and I and I don't have the ability to immediately blow it out, my third question would be, well, can I use it up? And now we're talking about discretionary distributions. Of course, the most common standard being health support, maintenance, education. And we can use those types of distributions to reduce the corpus of the trust. And the the discussion of distributions and the ascertainable standard uh, could be a lengthy one in and of itself. Uh, but if you refer to the restatement third of trust at section 50, it talks a little bit about how distributions can be used that fit a discretionary standard. So third question is, can I use the discretionary distribution standard in the trust to use it up entirely? If not, if none of those three questions work, then I thought, well, okay, can I change it on my own? Can I just go and change the unchangeable trust? And the answer is yes. If the settlor and all the beneficiaries agree, then the trust can be terminated and, and split amongst the parties as they agree as part of that agreement, and that's found at UTC 411A. The difficulty there, of course, is you have to have settlors and all the beneficiaries. There's a mechanism in the statute that would cover most of the beneficiaries, but not all. But basically, the settlor has to be there. And in my family trust marital trust example, that's not the case. But having everyone in agreement is one way to do that. Another might be a non-judicial settlement, which is found at UTC 111. So if none of those work, then I'm, I'm left with my final option, which is can the court help me change the document? Um, and there you have a couple of options as well. Now we need to petition the court and get their approval. The first, uh, and there's basically four options under this final question, which is, can the court help me change it? And then as first, if it's uneconomical, but maybe greater than a safe harbor, um, and that is UTC 414B. So here the court would uh, agree that it's uneconomical, even if it's beyond the amount that the statute says would be the safe harbor. In those kind of situations, the division of the trust on the backside would be uh, usually by actuarial means. The next version would be, what about, I don't have the settlor because the settlor has passed, but can all the beneficiaries agree? And the answer is yes, at UTC 411B. The most significant issue there, though, is that it cannot be inconsistent with the material purpose of the trust. So in other words, if the trust is set up for uh, the specific purpose that is to be achieved, we can't change the trust to get around that issue. And so that's usually the biggest point there. But if that's the case, then if it's not inconsistent, then the beneficiaries can agree. If perhaps it's consistent with the material purpose, but situations have changed anyway, that would be the, the third variation of court help, and that is unanticipated circumstances, UTC 412A. Here, it furthers the material purpose of the trust, but the situation is changed such that we can't follow the trust exactly like it's written. And this is equivalent to our common law equitable deviation, and that can be more can be discovered about that at uh, restatement third of trust. Section 66, comment A. Finally, uh, we have the option if we don't follow the economic option or the beneficiaries or the unanticipated circumstances. Finally, the court can get involved to achieve the settlor's tax objectives. And that's section 416. It, there, we have to be consistent with the probable intent. And uh, that is discussed at the restatement third, property, wills, and other donative transfers at section 12.2. And the short of it is that I think that that applies to a lot of cases because the typical clients don't come in and ask for an AB type plan without taxes being the primary objective. And the fact that there's a, a penalty because of change in the tax law might be a good way to have that. So those are the questions that I look at when I've got an irrevocable trust that no longer fits its purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh, for speaking with us today about dealing with unwanted irrevocable trust. Thank you for listening to this episode of AgTech Trust and Estate Talk. 
the podcast series about wealth planning matters from the American College of Trust and Estate Counsel. To find an ACTEC lawyer near you, visit ACTEC.org. Please subscribe to this series and leave us a rating or a review. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at ACTEC Talk.